here. Let's take a look at how these little guys behave. So we've talked a lot about uh, the infrastructure and the unified communications manager and the different devices and everything, but one thing you're definitely going to be quizzed on in the exam is how phones act. And this is just a basic rundown. We're not talking too much about class restrictions or anything like that yet. We're just talking about the basic functionality. What's their outlook on the world? Where's that intelligence that I was talking about? So anyway, um, here's the thing. For phones, phones require power. So PoE should be used whenever possible. They can get their power from the switch or they can get their power from a power injector or a power cube. One of those two things. The power injector is where you've got an injector, you plug in the non-powered interface there, you plug in the phone here, okay? And so that's a power injector, which this goes to a uh, wall outlet, okay? So that's, a, that's an injector. Then you have the power cube, which is just something that plugs directly into the wall from the phone. So you've got to have this go directly to a wall outlet. Okay. So th the difference is with the power injector is I may put the injector much further away from the phone than, than we need power. So if you don't have a power outlet right there available, you can get this power injector and put it closer to the switch if you wanted. Right? But the ideal solution, the best solution, is using PoE. Power over Ethernet, it's powered by the switch. So the phone boots up and everything is good. Life's good. Well, the phone will use CDP to discover their voice VLAN. Okay? So this is an example of that right here. Um, well, this is an example of the actual traffic flow. But anyway, uh, the phone looks and he goes, hey, Switch, uh, I'm a phone. And the Switch goes, I know you're a phone. I see your MAC address, and that tells me that you're a Cisco phone. So because you're a Cisco phone, I'm going to assign you to the voice VLAN. And actually, I have these two backwards, the colors right here. I have them backwards. That's so, so funny. Um, but anyway, the, the, the data, this is really, the blue is supposed to be um, the, let me just do this real quick. Da, 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 da. That's going to confuse me too much. And if I'm confused, there's no telling about you guys. So uh, anyway, no, I'm just playing. Um, so the the data is VLAN 100 and the voice is VLAN 50 okay so um, the the phone goes out and he goes hey I'm a phone he goes I know you're a phone so he assigns him to the voice VLAN which is VLAN 50 so you can see right here this 802.1Q that's, uh, that's what's going on there between the switch port and the phone. There's a little pseudo uh, switch thing going on because it's passing tag traffic. Okay, um, Now, that's actually just a marking that's going on. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But lo and behold, he's connected to the uh, VLAN 50, the voice VLAN. Okay? The, uh, the data VLAN is 100. And actually, I see now what I did uh, wrong was I got the colors wrong. Anyway, um, so they use DHP to get their IP configuration. So then I do my DHP request. I get a DHP address, and then I go and look for my TFTP server. TFTP server has my configuration files. It's got my MAC address.cnf.xml file. Okay, it should. That's the file that has my configuration for me. That tells me who my call managers are, what firmware I'm supposed to use, all my settings, if I'm supposed to use locale, all that kind of stuff for a language. It has all that configuration. And so phones are identified on the network, the line types, everything, um, by their MAC address. Okay? There is a switch port, um, switch port PC port in the back of the phone. We'll just say, yeah, switch port PC put that in parentheses. In the back of the phone, um, to extend any uh, voice data VLAN to a connecting device. Sorry about that, geez. To connect, extend any data VLAN to a connecting device. So in this example, we've extended the uh, data VLAN to this guy right there, okay? Uh, do not cascade this to another phone. So in other words, don't take the data jack and go, oh, I'm gonna plug in another phone. 
A, you would not have power for the other phone, but B, it's just not designed to work that way. Okay, so you don't want to do that. It's just not something you want to do. Okay, you could, but you're going to have problems. It's not a good idea. You don't want to do it. Stay away from it. As far as I'm concerned, it can't be done. Okay, all right. So after all that happens, then I get my uh, device configuration file, and the IP phones download their specific configuration file, which is XML based from the TFTP server. So it looks for the SEP MAC address.cnf.xml. Okay, so SEP is just the the MAC uh, the abbreviation skinny endpoint, uh, and so then the actual MAC address of the file or the MAC address it would be the name .cnf.xml. If that is not found, then it downloads this file, which is extremely important XML default .cnf.xml, and so that file has the load commands in it with the firmware of all the different phones that are supported on the system. So whenever the phone gets that configuration, it goes, hey, um, I don't have a configuration for you. But what you can do is go ahead and update your firmware so you can be on the same platform as everybody else. And the phone goes, OK, I'll do that. Now, here's the thing. If auto configuration is enabled, after that happens, Okay, so I've, I've requested my firmware, or I'm sorry, I've requested my configuration file, um, MAC address.cnf.xml, and it wasn't there. Well, now the router knows who I am. He goes, oh, wait a second, I just saw a phone came in, and his MAC address was F104-6421, BC8D, right? And so he's got that MAC address. So if auto registration is enabled on Call Manager Express or, Unit, or, uh, or Unified Communications Manager, then it now knows the MAC address to set up that auto registration parameters. So I first don't get that file because it's not available. And I download this XML uh, default.cnf.xml. That says, go ahead and update your firmware, get to this latest firmware. Well, after a firmware update, I'm going to reset, right? So after I get my firmware, I'm going to do a reset. Well, now I'm going to go back and look for the same TFTP server. But now, since I had the MAC address in there and I had auto registration enabled, this file would exist finally, right? That's only if auto registration is enabled and only if the, uh, the phone wasn't already configured. That's the process, okay? And then this configuration file, of course, points to the call agent, whether it's Cisco Unified Communications Manager or uh, Call Manager Express, okay? So that's a very key important thing that the phone does. Now, here's the thing. With skinny devices, the IP phone, this is the boot process, this is the official one, this is going to be on the exam. Well, I can't say 100%, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the exam. So, IP phone gains power from the PoE switch, that's if it's using PoE switches. The phone loads the local image, okay, so it's already got firmware whenever it ships in the factory, so it's going to go ahead and load that first. Then it uses CDP to learn the voice VLAN from the switch and then it does a DHCP request. After it gets its DHCP as part of that, it gets the TFTP server, and it uses TFTP to download his configuration file. After he downloads his configuration file, he registers with the call manager or the call manager express. And you should be able to see it registered either by looking at your devices in Unified Communications Manager or by going into call manager express and do show ePhone reg. Either one, you should see phones registered in call manager, it says, with this IP, you're good to go, okay? Auto registration. Let's look at this process. It's similar for both. The phone does the normal boot up process. It attempts to register with the call manager, but since there's no configuration, I kind of just went over this, so I'm going to do this quick. Since there's no configuration, I get this XML default.cnf.xml. Update the firmware if needed. Nine times out of ten, it's needed, right? So. Um, at the, uh, the CUCM creates device XML based on the initial request. So now I know the MAC address. I've created it. 
The phone reboots using the specific file and completes registration. Auto registration in a nutshell. Okay. With SIP phone registration, there's one little minute difference between the Skinny and the SIP phone that we care about. It's very similar to Skinny, but the phone will request the CTL, that's the certificate. Okay, so I do that. And then the phone requests the SEP phone mac.cnf.xml. Okay, if it's present, and if it's not present, it will do the XML default.cnf.xml. Then the SIP phone requests load files. So it, it downloads its uh, uh, configuration, but SIP can have a local dial plan. Okay, Skinny doesn't have local dial plans, SIP can. So it just depends on the phone if it has one or not. And what that is, is that's dial rules that is downloaded to the phone. SIP gives us that ability so that you can actually match the dial rules on the phone instead of sending them to call manager first. You actually match them and then send them from the phone. It's a little bit different process. Okay, um, Revision 1 phones or type A phones use those local dial rules. They're no longer in use by SIP phones typically at least with Cisco Unified Communications Manager. Now, third-party phones, SIP phones, they use local dial rules all the time. Okay, those little spa phones out there uh, that are small business and polycoms, they usually all have local dial rules. Um, but the newer uh, SIP phones from Cisco usually don't. It usually just relies on the Communications Manager, and it's good to go. So this is the big difference between the uh, skinny phone and the SIP phone. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this section. It actually hadn't been that extremely large of one, right? And you just wanted to talk about this basic phone behavior because you will be tested on it, and I wanted you to know it. So that's that, and I'll see you in the next section.